Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be slightly different than my other videos because today's video we are finally doing a Q&A again. The last Q&A that I did was over a year ago so it is about time to do another one. I asked you guys in my community tab to ask me questions and I received over 280 questions so it is definitely overwhelming but I'm going to try my best to answer a lot of them. So here here we go. Now that I'm recording this video, I just hit 330,000 subscribers on YouTube and I am so grateful for you guys. I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you for supporting me along this amazing journey because as you all know, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So a massive thank you. And for now, I'm gonna spill the beans on what my life looked like over the past few weeks. One of the biggest updates is that my mom quit her job after working for 40 years for the same company because I inspired her to live life on her own terms. This is definitely one of the biggest flexes and achievements I ever had in my life. I'm so grateful. So I went to the Netherlands to celebrate this with her. She's going to start her own B&B right now and no more working nine to five for the same boss. After this, we went together to Nepal to celebrate even more. And we did an amazing trek in the mountains of Nepal. I do have to say I am slowly falling in love with this country more and more and with the mountains. I really developed a new passion of climbing mountains and of mountaineering. I am really excited and I am already learning more about this because I want to keep continuing this. So I will definitely coming back to Nepal more and more. And I think I came back from Nepal now three days ago. So right now I'm back in Bali and that is why I finally have time to do this Q&A. So now that you guys know what I have been doing and where I am right now, I'm gonna start answering the questions. I'm gonna start with the most asked question ever. If I would get a dollar for every time someone asks me this question, I think I would be very rich. And that is if I am single, married or dating. In a lot of my previous videos, I have been joking about finding a Nepalese husband. And I've been seeing that a lot of you guys are very curious if I actually have a husband, if I'm married, if I'm single. And the answer to this question is that I am still single. And also the question about my height is asked a lot. My height is one meter and 78 centimeters. So that is quite tall especially being in Nepal I felt very tall but to be completely honest it is very common in the Netherlands and that is also to answer another question I am originally from the Netherlands I lived here until 2020 on and off because I also lived in Suriname for a while and I have been living in Laos for a while as well before 2020. After 2020 I made the move to Bali, Indonesia where hopefully I will be living for the rest of my life. How many tattoos do I have? To answer this question I have 12 tattoos. My first ever tattoo is this one which is written in Italian and I have it together with my mom which basically says that I love her until heaven and back and all the other 11 tattoos I got within one year this was my wild child year I think this was my first one and a half year maybe in Mali and I got so many tattoos but to be honest, I don't regret a single one of them. I do have to say I stopped getting any new tattoos. Maybe I will get one or two more in the future. But for now, I think it's more than enough. Oh, I actually forgot one. So I have 13 tattoos in total. I see I forgot this one, which says time. This one always reminds me to enjoy time to the fullest. And that time is the most valuable asset that we have. And my philosophy of life is that life is all about simply enjoying the passage of time. For me, that is what life all is about. So this tattoo reminds me always of it. And I also get asked a lot about my own tattoo. I am not Hindu, I am not Buddhist, but I got this one actually in India. But the Om represents God, the creation, and the oneness with creation. And for me, that is so, so beautiful. It is a very controversial tattoo because actually I get a lot of comments on it seeing that I'm disrespecting cultures or I am respecting cultures or that they think I'm from a certain belief but for me it's just the beauty of the oneness of creation and I actually love this tattoo a lot then we have the next question which is 
rank top five best countries which you visited and which one is close to your heart. This is a difficult one for me to be honest, but I'll try my best. I'm gonna say these countries in no specific order. So there's not number one or number five. These are just five of my favorite countries. Definitely one of them is Indonesia. I live here, I love the people. Indonesia feels more home for me than the Netherlands to be honest. So Indonesia cannot miss on this list. I just feel so at home in Indonesia. Then next up we have Nepal. I am developing such a huge love for this country because of also the people, the friendliness, but the nature there is one of a kind. I love their religion. I love so much about this country that I've been there already two times within half a year and I'm already planning my trip back there. So that says a lot. Then the next one can also not miss on this list and that is India. India is very controversial and I received a lot of comments on me visiting India and my wild trip there. But to be honest, India changed my life in the best way possible. It opened me up for so many new things and I learned so much in this country. It is such a vibrant and beautiful country. Obviously, you have to be careful in India because there are different sides to this country, but I think it has so much to offer and it has such a rich History, it is so beautiful, especially the places Udaipur, Jaipur. I loved my time there. It is so interesting. We were planning on going to India after my previous Nepal trip, but our flight got canceled. We were all very sick, so unfortunately we had to cancel it. But I am definitely planning on going back to India. Then I have another one on the list, which is Mexico. I love this country because of the cenotes. I love their culture. I love the language. I actually speak a little bit of Spanish. When I was younger, I was fluent because a fun fact that a lot of you guys don't know is that I have Spanish family. I talked a lot Spanish with them when I was younger, but unfortunately, I haven't been seeing them much, so I'm forgetting my Spanish a little bit. But also the nature there is beautiful. The Maya culture, oh, it is stunning. So that is hopefully this year I'll make my way back to Mexico. And then I think last one cannot miss is the Philippines. I have been here a long time ago and I can't wait to go back. I think the Philippines simply have one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. The water is incredible and the nature, oh, it is one of a kind. Unfortunately, I forgot Europe on this list, but if I can peep them in as well, then I would definitely say Greece and Italy should be on this list as well. Then we have, is Jenny your sister or friend? This is so funny because we've been receiving this question so many times. So everyone calls her Jenny, but Janine. We met here in Bali and she is a friend. We've been traveling, I think for the last maybe year already, a lot together. We both have our separate YouTube channels. We just love to travel together and we are really, really good friends. We are such a good match when it comes to traveling and recording content all the time because behind the scenes, there is a lot going on that you guys don't see these trips can be very hectic because recording content takes a lot of time and also a lot of energy so you need to be with the right people who lift you up and Janine really is that for me a lot of people say we actually look alike we both really don't agree with this because this is the difference between us but let me know in the comments if you guys think Janine and I look alike or not what is your zodiac sign I'm a Capricorn that also maybe explains why I'm working so hard all the time are you a full-time traveler? Actually, I'm not a full-time traveler. I have my house in Bali. I am leasing my house for a few years here in Bali and this is my base. So I always come back here and mostly I do around two or three big trips a year where I record content because this takes a lot of time and effort to make it. So I then will be away for three or four weeks and then I have someone looking after my cat because I have a cat here in Bali and after my house and then I can come back here again and work on my routine First, I was a full-time traveler, but to be honest, my health couldn't keep up with all this traveling. And it is nice in the beginning, but I think all travelers can agree that once you are traveling so much, there is no routine, there is no stability. And I love self-care. I love working on myself. I love reading books. I love going to the gym. I love eating healthy food. And those are things that you have to compromise when you are traveling full-time. And I love having a house and having my own coffee machine. And maybe I'm getting older. That can also be the reason. But 
for me it was time to have a stable base and that is I think last year so in 2023 around May I finally settled down a little bit more and right now I am still traveling a lot especially around Indonesia and then like I said I do a few big trips a year who is your favorite singer and actor actor to be honest I don't have a favorite actor because I don't watch that much Netflix and TV so I can't really answer that question singer my absolute favorite singer is definitely Stormzy I love his music so much it is so calm and so relaxing and it just takes me onto a very relaxing atmosphere and I love it and also I really like John Mayer my biggest dream is to go to a concert of him and to just be singing along with all of his music what do you do for a living? How to make money by traveling? Yeah, these questions I get a lot. The question is, how do I afford to travel? To answer this question, I have a few income streams. I think the number one that you guys maybe know or see is that I get income from YouTube AdSense. These are the small advertisement breaks that you can see in my videos. You'll probably see a few in this video as well. So if you are watching this video, it means you are supporting me and my channel. Thank you so much for this. That is my number one income stream. So from all the videos from Google AdSense. Then on top of that, I have partnerships with brands. So sometimes you can see a one minute break into one of my videos and I will be representing a product or will promoting something and I will get paid for it. This I do on YouTube, but also on Instagram. So on Instagram, I can create reels for brands or pictures or give shout outs or stories or I give brands combined packages where I offer them a shout out in my YouTube video and on my Instagram. That is my second stream of income. Then here in Bali, I have been lucky enough to have two villas that I'm renting out on Airbnb. So I am also in the villa business here in Bali. And then on top of that, I have a few smaller income streams. One of them is my e-products. I am selling a lot of e-guides where I help you guys to plan your trips to beautiful destinations and also where you can learn more about creating reels and right now I am actually working on a guide to show you guys how you can grow on YouTube and how you can start a life for yourself like this so that is basically how I earn my money what does traveling teach you and what have you learned so far during your adventures I think I can answer this question very simply and that is my perception my perspective of the whole world completely changed if you grew up in one country I think you can put it best is that if you grew up in one country you basically only read one page of the entire book there is so much to discover there is so much to see so much to learn if you stay in your own country you become so close-minded you think that what you know is right but when you start traveling Everything that you know just gets thrown off the table and you learn so many new things and you see that you can spend your life in such a different way as well. So I think for me, it's just to become way more open-minded, way more flexible, and now nothing is too crazy for me anymore. My own beliefs, I thought once that they were how life was supposed to be, but now I'm like, okay, those were my beliefs, but I now know that you can live life in so many different ways. This is a fun question because I get this one a lot as well. Do I hook up while traveling around? It's crazy how interested you guys are in this whole behind the scene life of me. Actually, I have to disappoint you. I'm very boring. If I am traveling around, I am with my friends Janine and Vishnu and we love spending time with the three of us and it's such a good dynamic. We're always hanging out with the three of us. So the answer is no. And to answer another question, who is Vishnu? Vishnu is a friend of mine from Indonesia and we basically started my career together. He started out as my editor, then he became my editor and videographer. Then he started planning my trips as well. And now we are basically working together for so many years that I take him with me on a lot of trips and he helps me to fly the drone, to shoot content, he edits some videos I have a few other amazing editors so big shout out to them because they are the best but Vishnu you see in my content so he helps me a lot are there any behind the scenes moments from your vlogging journey you can share while answering questions actually maybe you guys know this already or not but I have a second channel which is called just vlogs and here you can see all my behind the scenes life. I upload here very raw content, simply edited, but here you can have a look at the behind the scenes. So if you guys don't know about this, you should definitely check it out. 
Are there any challenges you faced recently that you'd like to discuss with your viewers? There are. I definitely have a lot of challenges in my life, but I don't share that much on social media because I try to keep it positive. But I think it's also good to sometimes show you guys a little bit that not everything goes according to plan. So the end of last year, I actually got a burnout and I didn't really show this on social media, but I was severely burned out. I was working way too much. I actually started a new company, which was called moving pictures and I wanted to connect editors with aspiring creators and build the bridge between them and help more people but what I was realizing was that I cannot do everything by myself and I was running this YouTube channel I had so many other things I had my villas I had my second YouTube channel I have a household that I need to do I I needed to travel and then I started a new company and it was just all too much and on top of that, I launched my own sarong brand. So I started selling sarongs as well. And still, I love it. But unfortunately, I had to choose to stop these two new companies. So I'm not selling my sarongs anymore. And unfortunately, I had to quit moving pictures agency. But it's all for the best because now I can completely focus more on everything that I already had and build that up and live a way more slow life. My inner peace is right now the most important thing that I have to maintain. Can you share some of your favorite moments or memories from your vlogging career so far? To be honest, there are so many that this is almost an impossible question to answer. But what I can really say is that what I love most is the friendships that I have made. The friendships are definitely one of a kind. I meet so many inspiring people along the way with inspiring stories and it is truly incredible. How do you handle negative comments or criticism for viewers and what advice would you give to others? facing similar situations. To be honest, for me, it's very simple. If I receive a negative comment, I know that that has nothing to do with me, but everything with the other person. Because if you come from a place of love and happiness, there's not a single thought that would go out and troll people that you don't know on the internet. They're probably very unhappy or they are sad or something and they need to release their negative energy. So for me, I see it as a problem that they have and I don't take it personal at all because because I am a happy person and I would never ever go out on the internet and write negative comments. That means you must be unhappy and I wish them nothing but healing and success and love because that's what they need. What advice would you give to a teenager who is stressing about everything? Oh, so I have so much advice to share, but I guess the most important thing is to stop stressing about what other people think about you. Because if you really think about it, in 100 years or 150 years, everyone that you know, including yourself, won't be here anymore. We'll all be gone and there will just be a new generation worrying about the same things that you are worrying right now. Everything we are alive for such a small blip into the vastness of this all like it is just it can go by like this that you have to learn to enjoy the passage of time i keep saying it but life goes by so fast and we are literally humans on a floating rock in the universe so really try to take life not too seriously and enjoy and don't care about the small things and live a little. When did you realize that moment like, yes, I really want to travel? For me, I think it was already growing up. I never really felt at home in the Netherlands. I always wanted to see more. I didn't like the great atmosphere. I didn't like the super stressed, structured way of life in the Netherlands. There is no room for spontaneous things at all. Everything goes according to planning everything and people are stressed and I somehow as a child already was like, okay, I really don't belong here, but I had to finish my degree. So I wanted to have a little bit stability in my life. And that is why I think when I was 21 or 22, I graduated as a tourism manager. And that is when I finally had my freedom after so many years of being very unhappy, I do have to say. And that is when I could spread out my wings and go into the big world, which is what I did. So fun fact about me, I never ever worked a nine to five job and I never ever will. <laughs> What do you want to be known for in life? I guess what I want to be known for is for my kindness, the deepness of my passions, the way that I loved, the magic that I created and how I made my dreams reality. What are the things that excite you the most? For now, it is definitely spending time in nature, which is just recharging my soul. 
I love reading so much. I love reading mindset books, self-development books, especially books on spirituality. I love a lot. I love traveling, obviously, and I love working out. I love eating healthy. I love doing self-care, going to the gym, doing ice baths. I love a lot and just spending time with friends and family. Then I have the last question of all, and that is which are my favorite books? If you guys know me a little bit, you know that I love reading books. I would say 80% of my knowledge literally comes from books because I learned so much. I try to read one book a week, which can be very challenging, but at least one book a month. I have here my most favorite books and I'm gonna quickly show them to you. I think the number one that I actually ever read is The Power of Self-Confidence by Brian Tracy. This definitely kick-started my whole career into believing in myself and literally finding more self-confidence. Then I have Think Like a Monk from Jay Shetty. A lot of people know this book and it is with a reason because it is truly incredible. Then I think this is definitely the most epic one of all, which is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. If there's only one book that you can read, it should be this one. This definitely kick-started my whole spirituality career and it is life-changing and then my most favorite book of all time if i could only keep one book it would be this one and that is the untethered soul by michael a singer this is truly beautiful and i think everyone should read it i am planning on reading it for the second time but this is just masterpiece then we have Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is definitely a big, big seller because a lot of people know it with the reason it's incredible. And then we have last but not least Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is to develop good and healthy habits that will set you for the rest of your life. So I would say these are my favorite books, but there are so many more that you guys should check out for yourself. But if you can read these it's gonna change your life. So guys, these were the questions. I tried to answer as much as possible, but I also didn't want to make this video too long. But thank you guys for all these questions. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of comments saying that you loved my authenticity and how I treat the local people. And I just want to say these comments make my day so much. I receive so much love on my YouTube channel. And if I compare it with other creators, I definitely can see that I have one of the best communities out there. There's almost no hate being shown towards me and I really appreciate you guys for it. I love it so much. I really try to be my most authentic self on this channel. I try to show you the raw things as well and try to show you my face immediately after I wake up and try to be as real as possible so that you guys know that I am not faking anything and I just want to be as pure as possible. So it makes me really happy that that translates on screen as well. I am really grateful and I wish you all a very happy and a very good day and much love and respect from my side. Thank you again and I will see you in my next video. So see you. Bye.